What's going on, you guys? It's April Lark 32 here, bringing you guys the road to Wisest Atlanta episode one. This is actually my second time doing this recording, so hopefully I won't be racing too fast in my words for you guys. But other than that, let's dive right into this. Last time I did Wise Road to Wisest Atlanta, um, it received good, um, I guess, rapport by other people. Uh, people really enjoyed it. It got a lot of views. Uh, people really supported the series, and I did that back in 2013, I believe. So now I'm doing it, of course, uh, three years later. Um, and in this series. Typically what I do is I discuss um, things about uh, the YCS or whichever event it may be, uh, how to prepare best for it, and uh, how you should have the mindset and how you should prepare going into this event. So in this uh, first episode of this series is going to be talking about the deck types and certain cards that you want to look out for and how to prepare uh, accordingly for those. So without further ado, let's get into it. So of course you're going to have your top tier decks like Cosmo and Pepe, and what's also going to be on the rise is Monarchs, and you're also going to be having uh, lower tier decks such as the Teller Knights and decks that have gotten new life breathed into them. Uh, example, the Atlantean Prince, like Mermel. Um, so we're going to be talking about that and then some lower tier decks as well. So starting off with Cosmo, uh, obviously Bosch is going to be legal for this event. So you're going to have to watch out for Cosmo. Dark Destroyer is so busted. Eclipser is not as good. Um, it's still very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it, it's, it's not on the level of Dark Destroyer. You know, Dark Destroyer, the ability for it just to bring it out whenever you feel like it pretty much and just pop anything is so good. Uh, Eclipser might be ran as a one of, I could see it as. Uh, just because uh, it's a one of really, I mean, you, it, it can stop traps, which is cute. But then whenever it's destroyed, you add something to your hand, which isn't something that you do a lot. And something that I do want to point out about Cosmojo is that you can destroy any Cosmo monster you control to banish a card. Keep in mind that it does not target, so it's a dark smog really, since it can be in the graveyard or on the field. So don't forget that you can be able to target stuff in the graveyard. That's going to be very good against your monarch matchup as well, because you can be able to banish the pantheisms or prime monarchs or whatever it is that you need to banish out of their grave. And of course, Pepe is going to be prevalent as well. Um, they just got the new Pendulum Wizard. It's busted. Um, monarchs can apparently. Uh, beat it from what a buddy was telling me a few weeks ago. He said that monarchs can easily destroy Pepe. I don't really see that just because of the fact of how much uh, resources Pepe is able to gather. And whenever you try and blow up their monsters, they just all go to the extra deck pretty much unless they made an exceed. So obviously, these two decks is what you're going to have to watch out for. If you're not preparing for these, you're not going to do well at the event. And something that I think is going to be a little bit under the radar is monarchs. People are going to know that it's a thing, but most people aren't really. I, at least how I, how I feel about it anyway. Most people aren't going to be playing it um, so quickly going into the event just because that I believe that the structure that comes out like a week or two before the event even um, happens. So people won't really know what the best build will be for it necessarily unless they, you know, based off of other YouTubers or whatever the case may be. There might not be a lot of events to, a lot of um, events, excuse me, to base your Monarch build off of before the YCS. But it's still an extremely good deck. This structure deck from Monarchs has breathed new life into it, and it's extremely, extremely good, extremely fast-paced. Um, I saw an OTK build that I've mentioned on my channel before where uh, they're able to make Naturia Exterior by running Miracle Synchro Fusions, and Naturia Exterior is one of arguably one of the best fusions in the game. Um, and, of course, Mermel and Satellar Knights. Satellar Knights is on the lower end of things. Of course, the only thing that they lost in the last balance was Rota going to 1. Um, and then with Mermels, of course, they got the Atlantean Prince, which is very good. It helps set up plays. Um, and that for Mermails especially is amazing. Uh, again, like I said, it breathes new life into the deck. So anyone that held on to Mermails, uh, throughout that time, uh, from when they were released are going to be very happy about being able to run this at the event. I liked how, uh, one person that I know put it as ever since Mermails came out, uh, he said, and I quote, Mermel players will play Mermails until their dick falls off. So with this coming out, people that used to play Mermails are going to probably definitely be playing Mermails again. Now, something that I want to talk about specifically card-wise before I get to the Rogue stuff is Twin Twister and Cyber Dragon Infinity and cards of that sort. Twin Twister is extremely good. If you do not have a playset of these going into Atlanta, you need to pick up your playset. It's already $9.99 across the board here because it's just a very good $10 super. Um, if you're lucky, you might be able to get these for 5 I know that as soon as everything goes on sale here for Bosch, I'm going to be picking stuff up for it because... It's just such a good card. You know, discarding a card is a joke nowadays, like especially for decks like Pepe and Mermel, um, and even Monarchs for that matter. 
uh, discarding a card doesn't hurt you at all, and it's two MSTs in one. If someone really wanted to, they could run triple Twin Twister, triple MST, and if they have an Artifact Engine, then three Artifact Ignition. That would be very inconsistent, probably, but people could do it if they wanted to. Um, so back row destruction is definitely going to be a huge thing at this event. Uh, I don't expect to see a lot of decks playing big back row at this event. Uh, if they are, it's going to probably be an Artifact Engine, which after they after the opposing player has seen that game one, they're not going to be using Twin Twister a lot anyway going into the second game. Cyber Dragon Infinity is obviously going to be something that you have to watch out for. It's $75 across the board here for good reason. It's absolutely busted. Um, if you're not playing this in your deck, it's probably because you're playing Cosmo or Rogue. But if you're playing something like Pepe that can have a rank 4 spam uh, going into Ptolemus and then into Nova and Infinity and whatnot, you need to be playing at least one. It's extremely good. I think having it at three is a bit overkill, to be honest. I understand it's good, but uh, you can have to, you can always have too much of a good thing. So, you know, just be careful about how many run. I would say that one would be fine. But Infinity is definitely going to be something that you have to watch out for in the Pepe matchup because it's so, so, so good. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. And I can hear my dad talking downstairs as I'm making this video saying Chamber will win. No, Chamber trash. If you're playing Chamber at the event, just... Qu quit the game. It's it's not going to do well. Just saying. So anyway, let's move on to the rogue strategy. So of course you're going to be having kaiju's. Kaiju's have actually gone up in price a little bit, um, just because you know with the new support coming out and people trying out great old kaiju. Had a buddy of mine tell me that he tested a lot of kaiju and he didn't really like the great old kaiju engine because in his words and I quote it interacted with the opponent too much. So if you want to go rogue, uh, definitely play kaiju. Probably not the great old engine uh, because the great old engine is okay, but it does a little bit too much of what Kaiju is actually trying to accomplish. So I wouldn't really recommend going with the Gradle engine unless it, you know, it might work for you. But personally, it just, from what I've heard, it doesn't really work for a lot of people. Um, but if you want a decent rogue deck to go with, I would definitely go with Kaiju. Um, it's okay. It uh, can really catch your opponent off guard, especially at the top tables if you're able to make it that far. Um, so if you want to really catch your opponents off guard and pants them, definitely go with Kaiju. Now, in regards to even more rogue on the lower tier list, um, I threw this in here just because it's a recent FTK that I've been playing a crap ton of, and I just got done playing Vexicus 4666, and I beat him uh, game two because we did a match with this, and I drew into the FTK. Um, Enter Blathner FTK, the FTK where you can loop your opponent's hand and completely deck them out. This is going to probably be irrelevant, um, which anyone expecting me to do uh, an Exodia profile of the FTK with the bug engine, I'm not going to do just because it's really bad. Um, it actually, worse than this. This FTK here is very inconsistent. Um, people might try to play it if they know about it. I don't really know. They might just try to troll instead, but you really won't have to worry about this. And Chicken Game FTK is so bad right now because Damage Juggler is a thing, uh, and Twin Twister is going to be a thing and whatnot. So I really don't think that you're going to have to be worrying about decks like this or decks like Burn or Stall or whatever the case may be just because those decks are so outpaced. They're so power creeped. I've said it before on my channel, and I'll say it again. Chamber and loses to basic situations, and in every single person's side deck, they're playing Danko and Decree. So... You know, game one, you might be able to pants someone with, with Chainburn, um, but then they're just going to side deck and Dankos and Decrees on you, and then, you know, instead of you having the last laugh, your opponent's going to have the last laugh. Um, so, yeah, you really won't have to worry about these decks here. I think on the lowest tier you're going to have to worry about something is maybe Statue Stun, uh, but I doubt you'll even see that at the event just because that deck is so slow and so bad. Um, maybe some Death Bots, but personally, I don't think Death Bots are all that great, so you probably won't have to worry about that either. Um, the main decks, like I said, you know, that you want to prepare for, you know, with your main deck and side deck is Cosmo, Pepe, Monarchs, and Mermel. Anything else is just going to be pretty much considered rogue. I mean, you could argue that Satellite Knights aren't really rogue, but I mean, what have they really done um, outside of the regional level? Like, I mean, there's really nothing that they've done. So anyways, you guys, that is it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. Let me know what your thoughts are going are, uh Blech, I can't talk today. Let me know what your thoughts are going into this event. Uh, let me know uh, what you want me to do for the next episode. And I will happily uh, take requests. I also want to be discussing certain side deck options and certain techs that you might want to be running. But without, um, with that being said, if I could speak today, thank you guys for watching. As always, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.